This is a short video of how to import photos into a brand new Lightroom Classic catalog and add a couple key terms and titles to them. So here I have a brand new catalog in Lightroom and this is Lightroom Classic 2022. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a couple photos, I'm gonna bring them in do a couple things to them and talk about it. So I'm using the command button and pressing tab to get over the bridge. This is where I have all my photos sorted. I've gone through them. I've selected these um, 17 photos or so that I would like to bring over and edit. So once I've selected them all, and this is how I select them. There are other ways. Um, bridge is the easiest way for me to select them because it's so easy to go full screen and see everything. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to select every photo. I'm going to start to drag them. I'm going to hold down the mouse while I do it. And then with my left hand, I'm going to hit Command Tab until I'm on Lightroom. And then I'm going to just literally drop them on Lightroom. Once I do that, Lightroom says, okay, he wants to import whatever photos are selected. And so I have where it came from over here. And I have them here. There's four options at the top. Copy as DNG, copy, move, add. So if you ever have files that you need to just throw into Lightroom for a brief time to do some basic edits and get them exported again, you could add them. I always, 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 always start with copy as DNG. That's what I always do. So you could tell these are all raw files, most of them I think. Um, it doesn't mean JPEGs won't work, it'll work exactly the same. So a JPEG will not change it to a DNG, it can't, but it will allow you to uh, export or import your photos and anything that is a raw file, it will make a DNG. A DNG is a raw file, it's just a little more compressed. Okay, so once I have them selected here, and you can actually select them inside of here, I just don't like doing it, because I like to be able to see what Bridge offers full screen. So, over on the left, I'm sorry, the right side is file handling. Some of these could be closed, little, like this. Open them up, take a look and see what they have. File handling, okay. Um, I don't really touch this, I kind of leave it alone. Let's kind of leave that alone, don't touch that. Renaming files. So I um, usually do a custom name, and this is what I do. Um, let's say they took these pictures today, today is August 1st, so it's 2022. 2022-0801. Year is 2022. Month, August, date, first. So then give it a name, uh, an event, a photo shoot, something like that, tells you a little bit about what pictures are so you know. I'm gonna put Rick Burris because he is the gentleman who taught me um, some classes this summer and gave me these sample photos to use. It's just some random different photos that he has shot over time that he gave us a folder that we could use with students. So, okay, so I've done that. Now I'm gonna tab down here. Now, metadata, let's talk a little bit about this. I'm gonna click new metadata. I'm telling you why in a moment. I'm gonna call it photographer biography or bio. Um, and then I'm gonna look through. Metadata is embedded and baked into the photo itself. It's very hard to remove metadata completely. But I just wanna point out a couple things to you. There are lots and lots and lots of different metadata you can put in here. Some, like video, I don't care about that. Three dimension, I don't care about that. Um, these plugins, I don't care about these things. What do I care about? I care about stuff like Creator. Who has created these images? Um, if they were my own, they're not. For the demo, I'm just gonna put my own name. Because I wanna be able to save this. Devin Christopher Adams. Address, don't put your home address, please don't. City. Uh, Arizona postal code if you would like I'll tell you in a minute why email address where can they find you okay so I put all this information in for sure because 
Um, and if I have a copyright, if you want to change this to copyrighted or public domain, here's the deal. If you put this information in and somebody sees your picture online somewhere and looks at the metadata, they can contact you. Let's say I have a photo and somebody's like, this would be a great for the textbook I'm writing. And they see it on some online photo page or something. So they can actually find me an email address in here, email me and say, hey, I saw your picture here. It's a great photo. I'm looking for a textbook photo on personal communication. You got this guy on stage having a conversation. Love to use your photo. And then they license it from me. This happens to me a couple times a year where I make a little bit of money um, on photos I've taken. And without personal information in here, they wouldn't know how to contact me. You can put a phone number in here. I have a Google phone that I use. Um, they created, a lot of that just is kind of automatic because metadata pulls from the photos themselves. Now, the other thing down here at the bottom, keywords. So, keywording. Um, these are tags, like hashtags. So let's put a couple things in here. Um, my name. My my name with middle initial, full name. Um, oh, that's pretty good. Okay, so here's my information. I put in the zip code where I live, or work, city, state. Don't put your home address. If you want them to be copyrighted, put copyright. If you don't mind somebody sharing them, you can put public domain, or you could just leave it blank. The rest, I leave alone. I have this here. Um, save current settings as new preset. And again, photographer, bio. Okay, so create. It looks like it's trying to copy over it. So it really, it, yeah, I ended up doing it twice. Sorry about that. So some other keywords. Um, well, Rick Burris gave me this picture, so I'm going to put his name. Another keyword might be 2022, August 2022, August. All of these will help you locate the pictures and know when you took them or when you uploaded them, etc. Now, we got to determine, determine where they're going to go. Now, for me, okay, I actually have a lot in here but let's say I'm in pictures folder and let's say my pictures folder is pretty empty because yours would be I'm gonna create a new photo in a folder in here and I may call it um, LRCC 2022 2023 photos create choose so now if you look here, there's that folder. Okay, right here. Pictures, LRC, Lightroom, Creative Cloud, or Classic Cloud, or whatever it's called, I don't remember. And so up here, there's a couple of things you could do. I've renamed these files. Um, date, and what is this? I can actually copy this. And down here, into my subfolder, I can paste. So my file, and my subfolder names are the same. I do this all the time. I've been doing this this way for about 15 years. It works for me. I've never had an issue with this. Okay, so once I'm done with that, I'm gonna hit import and your pictures are starting to import. You can see this little operation right here as they start to appear. And it might take a little bit of time. No, that's time. Okay, so non-raw files were not converted to DNG. What it's saying is, if you have any files here that are not raw, it'll leave them alone, just bring them in as a JPEG or a TIFF or a PNG. You can say don't show it again if you don't want to. I'll leave it alone. Now the photos are here. Um, now, a couple other keywords came in with this, as I told you. These files are from a guy named Rick Burris and uh, these other tags in here that we're that I'm highlighting in blue right now are all his. I didn't put those there. He actually did. They were already embedded in the photos, so it's kind of cool to see. Um, 
and he has his copyright here. And again, he lets me use these for students just like you. He put that in just to cover his work. So now once we're in here, um, we are ready to work on photos. So this is what your Lightroom looks like. Up here is your name. You can edit this. Kind of change it to Lightroom Classic. You can personalize. So it gives you your name, whatever. I don't care. Um, we have library. We have develop. We have map, book, slideshow, print, and web. Right now I'm in the library view. And there are some text and other attributes up here that you can include as you sort through things. Uh, metadata, all your metadata is here. So if you want to find everything by a certain camera, if you have multiple cameras like we have here, or multiple lenses like we have here. Um, so that's how to import. In the next video, I'll show you how to start editing, and doing basic edits as well as global and local adjustments. Thanks so much.